Well, Dr. Jack, thanks for taking the time to uh, be with us today. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Um, you describe yourself as a medical technology entrepreneur. Uh, I'd love to hear a little bit more about yourself and your background. Sure. So, started off life as a doctor training at just up the road, UCL. Um, uh, qualified way back in 98 now. And um, I guess all the way through medical school, paid my way by doing IT consulting. Um, worked for a very brilliant man called Douglas Adams, who, I don't know if you remember The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, he, he wrote that incredible thing way back, even before I was born. And, um, you know, the story, the story is all built around a, uh, you know, a kind of a device, I suppose, that helps somebody have access to all the knowledge and wisdom in the universe, and you carry it around in your pocket. So I s realized through working with Douglas and the incredible crew at the Digital Village, literally down the road, Maiden Lane, just, just around the corner, that we, we were practicing medicine in kind of the Stone Age, um, that this kind of concept of libraries and books that were written based on research that took maybe five, ten years to, for scientists to, to, to publish um, was, was not the reality of how uh, disease and, and treatment works for humans in their homes and their lives and, and sort of the nuances of what works and what doesn't. And it got me thinking that perhaps the use of connected devices um, and information technology would absolutely transform what we regarded as truth um, in medicine. And it set me off on a path uh, to start a number of ventures um, where we really put people and the information and data that we got from the patient, the individuals themselves, to, uh, to form the key part um, of, of the knowledge that we had about uh, how a certain treatment might work, um, how an individual uh, compares to uh, you know, the norm uh, and uh, make a difference. So when you talk about being um, a medical entrepreneur and you talk about your background that kind of acts as a catalyst to head in that direction, do you think that this is going to become increasingly like prevalent in the industry and more and more people are going to look at trying to combine science and technology? And you know, Is this a potential point of excitement for future clinicians? Yeah, I, I guess if we don't, we're in trouble, is, is the bottom line. Um, so more and more of the people that in the end are paying for healthcare, governments, um, insurance companies, insurance companies that take risk on behalf of governments, um, they know that healthcare is not affordable um, and, in, 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 and, and the, the percentage of the population needing expensive healthcare is only going to go up. So without innovation, um, we're stuffed. So quite rapidly we're seeing, I think, now over the last couple of years, an inflection point in the incentivizations to innovate. And I think we're also seeing um, a generation of people who throughout their childhood and throughout their education um, have seen, have had way more than just glimpses of the future by chance, having worked with people like Douglas Adams. They've just been completely absorbed by a digital technology revolution um, and they realize wow you know apps are easy to build and machine learning is relatively easy to implement on big data sets that are getting easier and easier to get one's hands on to be able to make more personalized decisions and get better outcomes for the same or even less uh, money um, patients themselves are realizing, hey, um, I don't need to be the president of the Royal College of Physicians to make a massive difference to everyone in the country with Crohn's disease. I can speak to all of them with my own experiences and with my own research. Um, and the regulatory authorities have a challenge to contain um, those changes. 
So this seem, g given that, that context and that background, there seems to be a shift in the continuing medical education for clinicians. So things like the NHS uh, entrepreneurship funds and the um, you know more of an emphasis on innovation. Yes. What's your thoughts on those items? We are at least in the UK. Uh, only recently uh, we saw in Manchester at the NHS Health and Care Innovation Expo this year the announcement by Sir Bruce Keogh um, uh, and uh, Professor Tony Young uh, of the uh, Clinician Entrepreneur Training Scheme. Uh, I mean, this is incredible. We're, we're moving now from people being kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe even, maybe not punished as such, but certainly uh, not encouraged to leave the day job, um, certainly disincentivized to, to do anything outside of, uh, outside of hours, um, and actually now have the opportunity to spend up to half of their time in startups and in transformative companies that have that going to do more for outcomes based medicine perhaps uh, than uh, than big pharma would, than any university can um, this is ex extremely good we will see now hundreds i hope maybe thousands of very, very capable clinicians who maybe also have biomedical sciences or computer sciences degrees, communications, marketing type background, um, be working in, in their own startups and in others in order to make big, big differences very quickly. So when you talk about some of those data from the wearable technologies and the smartphones, at what point do you think that data is going to move from the individual into a clinical setting and start to influence some of the decisions that have been made? So getting, one thing I just want to get straight is that the kind of data that we collect from consumer devices for ourselves or for you know someone training for an Ironman or a triathlon, um, just throwing that at your GP or a specialist is unwise. Presenting a doctor with something they've got to make a decision on that you've collected yourself from unapproved devices will be met with suspicion um, and maybe even fear because of medical legal reasons or just not being able to understand what any of this stuff means. So I think we need to make professional behavioral change um, and the use of data collected outside of the normal clinical setting. Um, we need to, we need to, make, need to make that a priority. How do we change the way that coalface clinicians absorb this data, look at it within their electronic medical record, and actually make better, earlier decisions based on things that they perhaps have never seen before, like you know, a week-long plot of heart rate variability? Mm. Uh, what does that tell us? It might, it might tell an athlete that they're recovering really well or not uh, as a result of a new intervention into their training program or not. Um, but what does it mean to somebody with congestive heart failure? Who's going to look at that and make a change to medication and put themselves at risk if they don't understand it? So how do we make that change is a really, really interesting thing. And I think the the next generation of, of medical students should be trained in what all of these kinds of uh, new types of data mean um, and also taking those data and making them digestible quickly by human beings who in the end are still making decisions uh, for other human beings uh, is, is going to be a big, big area of innovation. And taking it even like a stage further, do you think that as people are considering that career in medicine, it's not always just going to be about the physics and the chemistry, but having that kind of creative background, that digital background, you know, do you think people will be choosing this as a profession because actually it's a great place to be an entrepreneur? I think in medicine, though we think we're good at communicating, I don't actually think we are. I think it's uh, uh, the communications and uh, media um, professions, the industry really knows how to convey uh, difficult messages to people in simple forms to elicit behavioural change at the key moments of their lives. Um, we know more about when to 
inspire people, motivate them to make a change from um, you know, the advertising industry um, than we do in medicine. Um, and we need to harness that and learn it in order to make everyday practice on the wards um, better. But definitely, in your opinion, there is a need to perhaps evolve the education of a medical student to take in more around empathy, communication, perhaps technology and data analysis. Yeah, but not just, you know, kind of in the one-to-one -one environment, but understanding how to scale that um, just in the same way as big players, uh, you know, like, like Apple or Google or uh, big successful brands that are just, you know, they, they lead the world because they know how to talk to people. Yeah. Um, and I think the pharma industry needs to learn how to do that too. There are some good initiatives um, that I'm sure we all know about uh, where we've actually even shown better outcomes and reduced hospitalization and reduced cost as a result of employing these same techniques um, which, have a, which, which have a dual goal. They succeed in not only getting better outcomes but also making people have a better quality of life and feel more engaged with their care, etc. Um, one thing we need to definitely do is to lose our arrogance um, in healthcare. In a hundred years' time, we will be laughing at the medicine that we're putting in people today. How we can teach that, as well as teaching all the physiology and pharmacology and everything that we need to learn in order to, to become you know, basically trained clinicians, um, is a challenge. But I think there will be a group of people for whom separate modules and, um, you know, for instance, if you're going to pursue a dual qualification in digital health or entrepreneurship or, uh, or innovation, as well as becoming a physician or surgeon, those kinds of skills will be, um, will have to be taught. So I think where we're kind of landing is that it's an incredibly exciting world that we're moving into. But of course, for that next generation healthcare professional, whilst it's exciting, there's also potential challenges as well. Absolutely. But it's a good challenge. Good. And it's uh, whenever there's major change, which we hope is moving in the right direction, uh, there's always going to be waves. Um, overall, the tide is moving in the right direction. Good. Well, thanks a lot for your time. Really thanks appreciate it. That was great. Cheers.